In the meantime, before we move on to Arca, uh, Brandon, I want to do a check-in here on Shane Van Gisberg and a very impressive seventh-place run uh, here for him in the Xfinity Series at one of the most challenging tracks. How would you assess how his season has gone so far and how he's adapted to the ovals to the point where finishes like this are possible? I would say SVG is a very fast learner, as you can see here in the Xfinity Series, and, and hats off to him for um, allowing himself to be in the colleague car for some of the cup races, including this weekend. Didn't go so well for him on, on Sunday night, but man, that's a that's a great top 10 finish there for him. And this is one of the toughest, well, I can go ahead and say it. This is, I, I should say, this is the toughest oval uh, from, from many opinions on, on the calendar to learn and how to get just right. So that that shows you a ton of how much he's he's getting experience and improving at a very ex exponential rate. Now, the track has two tough team. That's the nickname that it's been given, or one of the nicknames it's been given, was how much history it has. It's also known as the Lady in Black, uh, and one of the most historic uh, places on the calendar, and a very difficult track for uh, rookies to come in and learn, and certainly somebody who's still trying to adapt to the ovals here in his rookie Xfinity series season. And who's going to need that experience when he goes full-time cup racing next year for track house. I think a seventh place finish is certainly something that he can uh, be very satisfied with and uh, building off of uh, another strong run fourth place in Indianapolis. And we'll see here. He could very well be leading the playoff grid when the playoffs start because of those three uh, victories on the road and street courses this year. So again, in this, in this crazy world of the playoffs that we have you know we got Watkins Glen uh coming up as well I know it's not a playoff race for the Xfinity series because of uh the playoffs being a little bit shorter only seven races here but you've got the Roval I mean who knows what SVG might be uh capable of if he puts in performances like this uh and all you have to do is get to the championship four who knows what happens I'm not saying he should be a championship favorite but the way this series goes sometimes you know who knows I wouldn't put a deep playoff run past him with how many playoff points he's going to have accumulated here yeah, I wouldn't at all. And then uh, I think about the Charlotte Roval as well. Equally excited for him to to make his appearance there. And uh, my first time to be able to say it. Congratulations on the Trackhouse Racing deal with the 88 next year. Um, that's some some huge news. And um, some people a little little skeptical to see that come back at a different place. But like numbers aren't owned by particular teams forever. They're owned by NASCAR. And so uh, the way yeah. you repurpose them, that's just the passage of time. And that's just the way things go. Um, uh, although it, it does, it does uh, make me a little curious about how much possibly Dale Jr. might be involved with Trackhouse Racing in the background. Something, something interesting to keep our eyes on. Yeah, oh, yeah, Connor Zilich, who, who knows, who might be in development there. But to, yeah, again, Brandon, to your point, I'm, I would argue that Junior's not even the most famous Dale to drive the eighty-eight. In many respects, yeah. Jared, Jared would be the first one there, maybe. Yeah, and I, th I think I, when I think of Junior, I think of the eight first anyway. I know he drove technically drove more races with the eighty eight than he did with the eight, but uh, you know, I again, you know, Austin Dillon's in the three car now. You know, Yates brought the twenty eight car back. We didn't think they'd uh, do that again. Uh, they they brought that for back for a couple of years. So, you know, numbers numbers aren't retired in this sport. Numbers aren't owned in this sport. Even I mean, how many? Legends have driven Denny Hamlin's eleven. I mean, think of all the all the legendary numbers that have driven that drivers that have driven that number. So, I'm looking forward to seeing what SVG can do next year, and uh, looking forward to seeing what he can do at the end of uh, this year as well. Still in the Xfinity series, so uh, good things coming. I think for the former Supercars driver, who's uh, I think adapted very well uh, here to NASCAR in uh, only just really a little more than a year, and uh, looking forward to seeing uh, what the future holds for him.